this talk that I give, and I've given for about five years, I give it to like actual show callers that are in the business um, at our biggest audiovisual conference every year. Um, and then I give it as well to meeting planners through all the various MPIs, PCMAs, ILEA, and just presented last week at the special event, Cater Source, um, to a packed house, which was really fun. Um, but we're, <laughs> we're gonna look at some really cool things. Is anybody here like a show caller or does that sort of stage management work or just wants to learn more about it? Yeah, I see a couple of hands. Awesome. Oh, I did have a couple of housekeeping no notes. If, you're, if you wanna get your CMP and CMM, make sure that you've checked in on a list at the front just so that we know that you were here. It's part of what the um, Event Industry Council asked us to do. And then we'll submit that on your behalf and it should show up within a couple of weeks. They originally sent us the wrong documents, so we filled it out for 23, submitted everything, and then they sent me an email, I think yesterday, saying, you didn't fill out the right document, fill out this one. And I'm like, but our thing's tomorrow. And they're like, it's, not, it's gonna be fine, it just might take a couple of weeks. Um, but you'll see that come through. So, a little bit about me. Again, I'm not usually on the main stage, I'm usually behind the scenes, right, or in front of house, directing everything. But um, I started out in motion picture production, did this little TV show called The X-Files back in the 90s. That was what I wanted to do my whole life. I wanted to work in movies. I didn't want to be on camera. I wanted to be a cinematographer, director, producer, lighting director, which is what I got to do. Did that for about 15 years, loved it. And in 2007, I asked my mentor, Google, what should I do with my life? I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so Google said, you should apply for this event planner job in Seattle, Washington. I was living in Vancouver, Canada at the time because that's where everything was being filmed. Um, and so I applied for this job with SPIE, the Society for Photonic Imaging Engineers. Really sounds like <laughs> it's a mouthful, but it's, it's all the doctors and scientists that are doing things like they developed the laser, right? They developed um, CD-ROMs, they, all the, the, this, these LED walls, they invented that technology. So we had a 20,000 person citywide, fell in love with live events. I was so used to doing, working on a, a movie, then seeing it in the theater a year later, getting to see the reaction of the audience in the theater while you're there, getting to see your name scroll up, that's pretty cool still. Um, but seeing at a live event where you've designed and you've, you've been thoughtful about how we put all the pieces together, how we wanna make that experience happen for our audience, whether it's 10 people in a boardroom or 10,000 people with receptions and outdoor and indoor experiences, how do you make that all cohesive, right? And so that's really what we want, always wanna do. Um, for 10 years, I was at Video West, which is a similar company to Seas. We were based in Arizona, but I did everything I promised I would do there as far as um, all of my goals and decided last year that I was turning 50. I want to do, I want to work for a company that will allow me to give back. I want to create a podcast. I want to do things like this. We're going to try and do this twice a year. Um, we want to just keep growing this, make this bigger and bigger, make it the flagship event in North County for sure. If not, you know, maybe one day all of California, but we gotta have goals, right? Um, but, um, so I gave my notice, um, left in very happy terms. Um, they, they went through all their, their, their modes of denial and, and like, oh, don't leave, we promise, we'll give you more money. And I was like, it's not about that. I want to spend the last 15 years of my life, my professional life, as I retire at 65 or hopefully before, um, really giving back. I've been so lucky to be on both sides of the coin as a planner. Uh, and then um, on the production side. So I love giving these talks, giving this information out there um, and joined C's about eight months ago because they had the same goals and mission. Our CEO, Zach, who's hopefully somewhere in the room. He's in the back, okay. Um, somebody who, right, we don't wanna be on stage so we hide in the background. But um, that's kind of where this all came from. So this is really the germination or the, the come throughness of the, all of that. So. There's 10,000 pieces of equipment on the other side of that wall. All that equipment does something, right? Everything, is, whether it's a microphone or a speaker or LED walls. We're gonna discover that there's really only three types of equipment. These are our learning pieces and you guys can get the slides um, and, and I think we're recording this as well, so we'll, we'll share that with y'all. But uh, we're gonna talk about the three types of AV equipment. They all do one of three things. We're gonna talk the two best practices about working with your AV team, your production partner, communication and timing, and then that number one variable, mitigating risk, right? We don't want to see Mariah Carey fail at the New Year's um, <laughs> Eve, right? Or them saying the wrong best picture winner at the Academy Awards, right? All these things. 
So we're actually gonna look at those. I had a friend who is Mariah Carey's audio engineer that night, <laughs> gave me all the skinny. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna use that part of it in my talk. Um, and then the Academy Awards we'll look at, and then a bunch of examples of where I've been a show caller. We'll watch it and you'll hear me calling the show. But whether it's a, a big meeting room like this, whether you're in front of your, your president of your organization or a bunch of presidents in a room, we're all trying to design an experience. Right? That's, that's a pretty slick opening. So the idea, this was a, a, we, that's a rendering, a 3D rendering of a pitch we just completed. We won the business. And the idea was they've always been with the same AV company, production company for 20 years, and they've always just had a pretty standard widescreen at the front of the room. And they were like, what's the experience? We said, let's wrap that screen all the way around the room. So 270 degree degrees of um, viewing surface. But you have to know how to manage that, right? Where do you put things on different sides? One of the ideas we had was they, they talk about electric cars. It's part of their, their industry. We're gonna have a car start over here. So if you're looking at the front, the car starts over here, drives around to the front, and by the time it gets to the front, two people get out of the car and start, get, start giving their talk. So really trying to think through all those things as a producer, as a show caller, as a stage manager. And those three, those three terms are pretty interchangeable depending where you are in the country different parts of the country, we'll, we'll, we'll shift those, those words around. But we're really talking about all the stuff that goes behind the scenes, right? So everything that we were doing, this is for an event I just did a, a, almost a year ago now, where we found out on the closing day of the conference that the White House wanted to stream in President um, Biden. So sure, no problem, we can figure that out. We had to adjust our show flow, move everybody around. We, we bumped our CEO from the conference off because he had already spoken the day before and put President Biden in there. So being able to manage all those pieces. And when do you need that stage management? It's when you've got all those moving pieces, right? When you've got a chance that somebody pretty high up might wanna stream in or, or show up, or, or maybe you're having a, um, you know, during the, during the pandemic, we were doing hybrids where we had these kinds of monitors, it's like three or four of them set up, and then people sitting on chairs remotely on each of those, and then panelists sitting between them where they were talking to each other. So being able to have somebody that's not an audio engineer, not a video engineer, not helping you with your PowerPoint, not, none of that stuff. They're just there to make sure all of that works well, and that it's timed properly now more than ever as we're streaming things. If we say the show needs to go on, at 11.30, it needs to start at 11.30, right? I love this Lauren Michaels quote. We've seen the Saturday Night Live episodes where they have not been ready and they've had to go live anyways. And they're usually somewhat better, but they're, they're funny, but they're clunky and, um, but that's the, that's the deal with broadcast television. You have to go on because it's 11.30. And as much as we talk about all of the technology and all of the fun things that we get to do, whether it's a hologram on stage or you know, bringing somebody in off a of trapeze, which we've all done. We've had elephants walk into ballrooms. We've, we had a CEO of a pharma um, group take the stage with a monkey on his back. So he could say, let's talk about the monkey on my back. And it was Obamacare at the time. <laughs> um, but we've got to keep in mind, as much as we love all the toys and tricks and tools that we can do, it's about the story, right? So we always, as I go through this, we'll always go back to the story. This is a photo I took of my niece, she's 21. I took this when she was about eight. She does not know I have this photo, but she's telling us a story. We're camping and she's telling us about the henna tattoo she got on the back of her, back of her hand. But we, as the people viewing my sweet, sweet niece, and like I said, she doesn't, I will show her this photo on her wedding day. Um, is she's putting out a message and we're trying to receive and we're laughing and she doesn't know why. So that's just an example of like, if we don't really carry that story, all the way through, we're opening up for failure. So whether it's the President of the United States, the President of your organization, or a whole bunch of people in a room, it's all just rocket science, right? It all comes down to communication and timing. And as I mentioned earlier, I do give this talk to professional show callers and stage managers. And so I tried to figure out a way, and being a child of the 80s and the 70s and the launch of the shuttle and, and, and somebody I always looked up to was the launch director. Cause man, that guy is cool as a cucumber. So I'm gonna use a couple of clips of him so you can see what I try to aspire to, what I try to do and what show callers, cause it's all about maintaining this very calm, 
very, very, very even demeanor. But we're gonna look at 30 seconds of a, of a shuttle launch, like you'd see it on TV, and then we're gonna look at it from the launch director's perspective, just to level the playing field, so, we're all, so we know what we're talking about. This is just an event, shuttle's taking off, and it's being broadcast. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy waves. Go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one. Booster ignition and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Space shuttle now rolling over onto its back with a ten-minute ride into orbit. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars. One last reach for the stars. Discovery's last mission. The men and women that put this program together, right? All scripted. That's all for our viewing pleasure, just like an event. So here's what it looks like behind the scenes. Same 30 seconds in time. Flight booster, three engines ready. Copy, three ready. Buddy. All vents open. 10. Copy vents. CLS is go for main engine start. Lift off confirmed. Copy lift off. Houston Discovery, roll progress. Roger roll, Discovery. And good roll flight. Copy, good roll. All right, wait for it, wait for it. Watch, 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 watch the satisfaction. It's coming. There it is, right? That's what I want to feel. I want to feel like everything came together perfectly and we've, we've launched that ballroom into the stratosphere, right? really want to make sure that we're, we're just delivering that experience like that's not scripted. It's very, there's a cadence. There's a way we speak to each other. There's a, d does this happen? Copy that happened, right? Or is this ready? Stand by this, go that, right? That's very, very structured. And we do that to minimize any mistakes, right? We're very back and forth. We're very engineered. The touchy-feely stuff happens up here. Hopefully the speaker's a good speaker and they're doing that well. So really, what do we do? We're managing the, the, the technical elements of the event. We're, we're managing what's happening on stage. Where should panel seats be placed in, in, in recognition of where the cameras are? Where can we get these nice shots? Sometimes we put cameras right on the deck where we can get these nice over shots so that we can see people having a nice conversation as you would like on a CNN program that sort of thing, but that, that show caller or stage manager is gonna work with your AV team, they're gonna communicate all those things that we don't all know, right? Even myself, I don't know all of it, so hiring the right person, putting them in that seat, and, and really taking that event forward is the way to go. So the first thing is that there are only three types of equipment, right, on the other side of this wall, that warehouse full of 10,000 pieces of gear. They all do one of three things. And I'll typically get a phone call or a, an email from a, from a client that's like, hey, Troy, so I, I gotta give a, we're, we're doing this conference, it's our you know, um, safety services association that is gonna put somebody up on stage, we've got a keynote speaker, so I need a microphone. I'm like, okay, well, a microphone, then we need speakers. Um, and then we find out that maybe we've got somebody that's gonna introduce that person, so we need another microphone and a mixer, and we're sort of interpreting all these things that we need, okay, they have a presentation. So we know we need a laptop, and we need screens, we need projectors, we add more laptops because we're doing notes. We add uh, lighting because now we're gonna be in a larger ballroom or we're gonna stream it. We add notes monitors, downstage monitors so I can see what the slide is that's next. Maybe it's my notes. Um, a quick story, if it's Bill Clinton, we do three. We have one that has the current slide, one that has the next slide, and then one, which I was curious about, 
Why did we put that other one? It's connected to one person's laptop, his handler, and all it did, the entire three-day conference, when he was going on too long, she would type stop talking, and he would wrap up whatever he was talking about in one more <laughs> sentence. Like He would go on for an hour, and she would say T stop talking because we're at the end of the, the time, and he would, he would wrap it up. I'm like, geez, politicians, man. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool. Since then, I've used it for a couple other clients but that won't stay on task. But So we had a panel, and we had music, and we had cameras, and all of these elements, right, that keep building into a show, right? Just this one, lighting. We've got three cameras. We've got LED wall. We've got this content here versus that content there versus whatever we're doing, right? The microphone that I forgot to use at the beginning versus the microphone that's on me. So how do we map all this stuff out and make it all connect? That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like to our technicians. Everything speaks to each other. They go through different things and they connect, but they all fall into one of these categories. So if you can think about it like this, this is how I go into a show. I need to know where all the sources are. What's gonna happen? Is it a microphone? Is it a video camera? Is it a web stream? Is somebody presenting from somewhere else in? then that needs to go somewhere where I can make the decision on what, it, what happens to it. For example, if I had music playing or, or when we, um, if I had music playing while I was speaking, I'd want the music at a lower level than my voice, right? So that decision is made by the show caller, like make it a little bit louder so they can hear it in the room. You work with your engineers to, to do all that. But that processing piece is just determining which things are going which way and at what level. Lighting is at a different level. Audio different levels, brightness and color and things like that from video, or which video are we using? Are we doing a PIP like this is? And then output, obviously, speakers, monitors, projectors. Now, more than ever, we have to think about, are they watching it on a Samsung device? Are they watching it on an iPhone? Are they watching it on a tablet? So we have to test everything before we send it out. <clears throat> so I think about it like this. Everything's coming in, everything's going through something, and everything's going out, right? In, processing, and out. And the way that I stay organized is using something called a show flow. And again, uh, for, I'll just email everybody a copy of my show flow. It's just an Excel spreadsheet, but it's got some formulas baked into it. So when you enter a time, you, you have a minute and a half long video, it'll automatically calculate how much time you've got, but you call out everything in here. You can see video, audio, lighting, stream, and then notes. You put everything in here and it happens very precisely, by the minute, by the second. We have every video. We try to guesstimate how long somebody's gonna be on stage. We put speaker timers down below to keep them on track, but we need to know how long videos play, how long music comes in, what's, their, what's the CEO's favorite music, what does he wanna come in, was it a good year? Are we playing Back in Black or are we playing Lady in Red because it was a bad year, right? What are, the, what, are the things, what are the things that we wanna do? But that all needs to be on here there's a few different softwares out there. There's something called Showflow that you can do this all online, but I have been trying it out for years and everybody wants a printed paper copy because they're sitting at their console and they want to be able to just handwrite notes and stuff. So this is a pretty much ready document. You just print it, hand it to your whole team, you're off to the races. So section two, let's talk about the two best practices of anything really, communication and timing. But it's critical when you're up on stage, right? You need to start your show on time. If doors are delayed, we need to communicate that. So I work with the client. You see the TD and the, or show manager we're right in line with the event manager. We're working with each other. I need to know when the doors are opening. Is there a plated service? Is there, um, is there anything we need to do? Is there an app that we need to reference? Is there walk-in slides that we need to pull up? Is there, what are all the things that need to happen? And then I work to fit it into a parameter. Well, I'm like, well, if, we have 63 assets and it's a half hour long stage presence. So it's like, okay, how do we make all of those, all those pieces fit in? But then I communicate with my team who communicates with their team. So I'll communicate with video and video will have probably the most positions, graphics, playback, cameras, webcast. They're just making sure everything's where it needs to be. So first case study I'll talk about is a Clinton Global Initiative. This was a, a, a client I had a few years ago and did a couple events with. This one in particular was at um, Arizona State University where they were there for three days talking about, um, it was about 2016, so right before Hillary was announcing, so it was big buzz and we were all very nervous. And CNN, we did everything, and then CNN showed up with a truck with, hooked up to their satellite 
We just gave them the feed. So we did all the switching, all the production, all the work. So backstage, this is, this is backstage. Bill Clinton would be on stage. And this is our team. The back row is all, all Clinton's handlers. Remember I told you about that laptop that would just tell him to stop talking? That's that one right there, right? And that's all that it was there for. Normally somebody wasn't at it, but um, they just run over and stop talking, send it. But we're talking about our guys. So looking at video engineering, this is a multi-view. So this is what I'm calling, this is what they'll see backstage, but when I'm sitting up at front of house and I'm calling the show, I usually want a view like this because this allows me to see all the different choices I have, right? Camera one, camera two, camera three. We have a graphics main, because we don't want anything to go wrong. We have a graphics backup. This is a slide from, the web, from a web page showing poll results, because they were polling during the, uh, the event. Some questions that were coming in via Twitter that, that was fed to a downstage monitor. And then an Apple TV, because Chelsea wanted to present with an iPad. So we had to turn our iPad live, and it fed to the Apple TV. So working our way down, that's, that's our, our um, V1 or our switcher, so the person that I'm communicating with, telling him which thing to choose, stand by this, go that. And then down the way, we've got Corey here, who's managing, because we're broadcasting, we have to stay within certain parameters. We have to stay legally within certain, used to be more um, important when, before things went to HD. HD is taking a lot of that out of it, but we really want colors to match. We want the amount of signal we're sending to, to be in a regulated space. And then further down, we've got playback and graphics that are just queuing up the videos in order, making sure that we're playing them when we need to. And then also we're watching the stream to make sure that looks good. So again, managing all of that. Who has or who's controlling the content, right? If it's a video, I'm talking to my video team. If it's an audio file, if it's a walk-in music or somebody on a microphone, I'll always be like, what microphone number is that? Do they have the right one? Do you see them on your console? Um, and again, it's because we're telling a story, right? We're trying to be cohesive, and who does that? That's us, that's the show caller, right? Getting everybody together. We will sit in a ballroom, we'll do table reads before you know, clients usually even get there. We'll just talk through the whole show flow. We'll make sure everybody knows before they even touch any equipment. Then we'll go and we'll run it through all the equipment. Then we'll do rehearsals, then we'll do an onstage rehearsal with talent. So doing all these things, really keeping it cohesive, keeping it moving forward. I need to know the length of everything. I've got one client that, um, it's a credit union group, and their CEO would never show up on time. Every summer we're at Caesars Palace, and their CEO would be 15 minutes late. So year two, I'm like, after he did it after year two, and year three I said, what are we gonna do when he shows up late again? And they're like, oh no, he'll be, he'll be on time this year. And I'm like, you've already done it to me twice. So you're gonna do it to me a third time, you're gonna have 3,000 people sitting in a ballroom just waiting. So we came up with uh, trivia slides. And sure enough, year three, 15 minutes late, ran the trivia slides. People loved it. Year four, they started giving prizes away for the trivia slides. <laughs> Still 15 minutes late. Like every, like, we knew, we knew. <coughs> and again, because the show goes on at the time it's supposed to go on. That's the way we think about things. You tell us doors open at 12 o'clock, the show starts at 12.30, that's where, we're, that's where we're aiming for. We know sometimes it's like we're delaying everything five minutes and we communicate that down the line, but really that's, that's the goal we're aiming for. So the next part of the communication and timing thing is the standby versus go. Has everybody kind of heard that where we're like, standby this, okay, we're gonna go to graphics. We never say go, we say we're, we're, we're about to take graphics. We don't say go, um, so standby graphics. And go, graphics, on that word go, that needs to be up on screen. Um, I've sat in on uh, NHL game um, in the control room for an NHL game uh, one, uh, one time and to watch them, any sporting event really, but NHL, be, uh, the hockey because it's so fast, they use a clicker, they have a little, all it does is go pop, pop. It's just a sound and they will, and that, that show caller, that director will say, all right, let's get an overhead shot of the whole stadium, of the, of the arena and go camera one, pop, pop. And that second pop out, it, th their engineer knows because it's a timing thing. He just knows that that second click is the, is the go, right? So they don't say go, but he's like, stand by camera two, click, click. Camera three, click, click. Camera four, try to find somebody in the audience, click, click. And that second click every time, that engineer is hitting the right button. And think about 20 cameras on, a, on, a, on an NHL hockey game. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. But... Pretty amazing when you can organize it all. So standby versus go. 
This is everything I can choose from. This is my preview, this is my standby. And that's live. That's what's happening, that's what's happening up on the screens. So I can choose anything I want down below, move it up into that preview or that standby spot. Everybody can see that, they know that, okay, and go camera, that'll slide over. The next um, piece will be Chelsea, oh, no, a couple more things. But you can see, we've gotta think about things like, if somebody's coming up to take an award, do a handshake, hand something off to somebody else, we want a little bit of a wider shot, right? We wanna capture both people. So anticipating those things, if we're going to a panel, realizing that we wanna get a wide shot of the panel first so we can establish where everybody is. So if you're watching remotely, your brain automatically goes, okay, um, Chelsea was sitting there, Bill was sitting there, Hillary was sitting there. Then when we cut in for all these overs and these coverage shots, your brain naturally knows where everybody was already sitting. So establishing the scene, camera placement and storytelling. <clears throat> but you can see on this event, we have a camera at the back of the room, pretty standard, right? One long lens camera. But up at the stage, we have uh, an orchestra, we have a choir, we have a band, we have a, um, an ASL uh, interpreter here, we, and then we have the main stage where we have people coming off and on. So having, I think there's one, two, three, four, four cameras just covering the stage plus a long lens, so five cameras to choose from in that, that, um, that setup. So again, looking at your sources, things go into standby, and then they go live. This next little clip will just be Chelsea taking the stage, and essentially she would be right behind this, the wall here, just off the wings of the, of the theater that we were in, and it'll be standby Chelsea, standby lights, and then standby voice of God. VOG says, please welcome to the stage, Chelsea Clinton, go lights, go Chelsea, and I would be back there and tap Chelsea on the back and take the stage. So that's what this looks like. Chelsea Clinton. Oh, good morning. Um, it is way too early to stand, but thank you for the warm welcome. Um, I hope that you all enjoyed last night's opening plenary session as much as I did. But you should hopefully have seen in there, there was like a first camera shot once she settled, it's standby camera, and then go camera once she's gotten behind the podium. Um, and then even went to a different camera shot after as, as everybody sat back down, just feeling the room, right? Creating that experience. So a couple things really, really good to know. I love when meeting planners can talk our language a little bit. So just being able to say what you're looking for, this is a wide or a full shot. This is a medium two shot. Medium typically, you know, waster up two people in it, so it's a two shot, medium three shot, but these are industry standard terms that have been around since filmmaking started. Medium close, and then an over medium two shot, another medium close, but you can see how I'll communicate that with the team, with the camera operators, with the person making the decision on which camera to choose, and it'll look a little something like this. It's really hard when you used to be in politics. Now, when I was in politics, I had a steady supply of people who would tell me all the latest jokes, and now it's, you're it. You're very lonely. <laughs> Don't feel any pressure. <laughs> you, uh, no, we talked about wasting time, and I think uh, probably a lot of young people are very good at that, especially now. We have uh, Facebook. So uh, what, can, what would you say, and what can the people in this room say to their friends who would rather play Flappy Bird or, um, or sit around and watch television? Because I, I, I feel like, um, I, I know this is a select group of very smart people, but it seems to me like it's hard to get anyone to care about anything now. I don't think I don't think that's necessarily true. Yeah, it is. I, it's no, true. I don't think so. See, <laughs> but you can see, like, even when we had to make the decision of when to take that Twitter side, that like, okay, everybody tweet your questions. Like, part of it is this intuition that show callers and stage, stage managers have, that they start to learn about different person. And Jimmy Kimmel's a little easy because we see him every night, right? We know what his, his demeanor is. But you could tell he was gonna go on a little bit longer for the question. We don't wanna put that slide over our guest, our, our, our you know, host family, 
that's there. So we put it up while he was still talking. We could tell he was going to talk for a little bit. So we had a good 20 seconds to get that slide up so people remotely could see it. People in the ballroom could see it as well because it went up on the main screens. Um, but really just anticipating all those things when somebody's going to speak versus somebody else. It can be challenging, but um, when you're good at it, it's really it's amazing to watch. So we're, again, telling stories, trying to fit it all together, keep it cohesive, make sure it makes sense, fitting it into parameters, make sure it speaks to all the equipment. We had to do an event. It was a breakfast. We couldn't get into the ballroom until midnight. Had to be ready for a breakfast for 1,000 people the next morning. It was a Chamber of Commerce event. We built the whole show in our boardroom in our office and programmed everything, had all the, all the slides because it was an awards program. It was like an awards video, nominee video, winner, awards video, nominee video, winner, right? Over and over. So lots of moving parts. Built the whole thing, had the same crew, did it on the equipment that was going to be in the ballroom, loaded it all up into cases, put it on the truck. It went to the ballroom at midnight, had a second team that set it all up. When that team that was there working with the client turned on their computers, turned on all their switchers and everything, everything was where it was supposed to be, we were ready to go. So really trying to make sure that we're staying in front of those things. And again, using our show flow, really trying to call out everything and anything that happens because if we can't do something, if we can't, if this video doesn't play, I need everybody that's working for me to know what else we could do, right? If I can't go from A to B to C, C's failing for whatever reason, we have to reboot a computer, we didn't have a backup or something, I need to go, okay, you know what? Let's get, um, let's put a slide up, let's do a voiceover, we'll play this after, we'll, we'll sort of move things around. So having everything as dialed in as possible before the show is so, so important. And then one um, thing, if you're working with, Who's familiar with like a Spider or an E2, which is a, a screen management tool? So it's a, a large computer basically that decides where things live. So if you picture this as like a widescreen center and then outboard screens and then these pips inside the middle. So a lot of show callers will create this template and then rather than having to go through and call all the different things that are happening, they just do something called presets. So a Spider will build all these presets and then so you can just see here, everybody needs to get to this, that spider preset automatically makes everything happen. Here, automatically makes everything happen. They're beautiful, beautiful toys to have, they're very expensive. So there's a little bit of, little bit of balance there. But um, this is usually when I give this talk, I'm like, if anybody wants this, reach out to me, but you guys should hopefully have all that information since you're here in our building. Um, but even, uh, this was for the Flagstaff uh, CVB. They had to do a shareholders meeting, and they asked me to come and, and show call it the, the next morning. I was living in Phoenix at the time, this was a few years ago. And I was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Like, you guys are just putting up some PowerPoint slides, and they're like, okay, but we are reporting on some big new things. We want walk-on music for everybody. We want each of our big hoteliers to be able to take the stage, and uh, we've got probably about 18 different people that need to go up and speak. I'm like, okay, this is tomorrow morning. <laughs> Sure, no problem. And she was a good friend of mine. We were, both were on the board at MPI. And so this is when I showed up. I was handed a whole bunch of microphones from the in-house AV team that already had these weird stickers on them. So I just went with what was already on them. I didn't have time to relabel everything, but I just needed to know the order in which I was handing them out. But you can see I wrote the songs that people wanted to play. I queued them up in Dropbox, had the songs ready to go, had my iPad plugged into the soundboard, and it went off perfectly. Luckily, they had it already timed out, so I just had to fill in the gaps, make sure who got which microphone when, all of that sort of thing. So I'm going to get into a little bit more of the um, example side of this now. This is going to be just a quick example of me calling the Lush Cosmetics Conference. Um, it's our manager's meeting. And you'll sort of just see, again, trying to, trying to embody that, that flight director, right? Be that, like solid sounding voice that everybody's ready to listen to and I'm never gonna freak out. Oh, the video didn't play? All right, let's figure out how to get that happening. But basically it looks a little something like this. So Michigan, so Michigan yeah. Adelaide, so the next slide is the video. So stand by, you've got, uh, you've got graphics AI. <laughs> so graphics AI. All right, and the video's going from graphics. Got audio, audio's coming up. Bring the lights down. Nice. Nice and subtle. Good work. Again, I'm not sure how long this video is. 
since it's embedded in product. This video is obviously a solution. Bring your stage wash down just a little bit as well. Just a little bit. Yeah, nice one. Nice job. Yeah, we'll just, as soon as they start talking again, we'll just bring all of this back up. You gotta kind of see how we want to keep things. I mean, the music really helps because they were doing this whole marketing thing about let's get naked. And so it was all this marketing, which helped. The music helps. It's very soothing and calming, but it's lush. They're all very soothing and calming. So that's kind of like the nuts and bolts of it. Now we're going to look at some like, like the Mariah Carey video, the, the, um, the Academy Awards videos, and then a couple more of me actually calling that show, but you're just going to hear the comms over it. So this is all about mitigating that number one variable to make sure your event goes perfect from a pr production standpoint, and that's having backups, that's rehearsing, that's testing things, just mitigating all of those risks out there because we're dealing with technology and technology goes south. I mean, the Super Bowl, remember when the power went out in the Super Bowl in New Orleans? What do you do, right? If that's your event, what do you do? Luckily, in that situation, they can cut to commercial, they can go to the ESPN desk, right, or, or whatever, whoever's hosting. But we really want to be doing all of these things. We want pre-show rehearsals, technical rehearsals. That's like what I said, where I sit with my team, we just do a table read, or we sit and we go through everything without the talent in the room. Talent rehearsals, if we can get people up on stage to actually walk through their presentation with us, that way we have no surprises. So many times we've been doing that, and all of a sudden, slide number six, oh, there's a video that plays <laughs> that's in there. All right, well, we got to make sure we've got all that set up. <clears throat> So production, dress rehearsals, in-person, and more important, virtual, right? As we went through the pandemic, I remember the first conference we did in the pandemic was a, a Western Dental Association. And it, we had presenters from all over the country that this one lady was in Colorado in the mountains somewhere. We couldn't get her stream, we could hear her, but we couldn't get her slides to show. So we finally talked to her about what kind of internet you got. She's like, oh, it's a dial-up. I'm like, what? I haven't even seen dial-up, and I work in this side of the business in 20 years. Um, so we ended up, she found a, a family friend or somebody in, in Denver. She drove down the day before, did her presentation from there. And that was like right at the beginning of lockdown. So it was really, that was, was eye-opening. How We can't control all those things, but what can we do to, at least we did that, that phone call and that test to see if we could see her um, and, then, and then found a solution. So... Who remembers 2017 Mariah Carey's microphone fail? So she has, um, and I, I mentioned earlier on that I had a friend that was the audio engineer for this, and I talked to him a little bit about it, and A, she didn't want to do any rehearsals, but they wouldn't let us touch her in-ear monitors, and her in-ear monitors, for uh, people at this level, they get them molded, and they actually take a mold of their ear, get these monitors to fit in perfectly for the Taylor Swifts and the Mariah Careys. So if it's not in there, you don't necessarily know it's not in there because it fits so well, right? Like picture your perfect pair of socks or perfect pair of gloves. It sits in there, so if it's fallen out, you don't really notice it. So you'll see where it's fallen down. It's sitting on her, um, sort of just falling down on her dress, and she's constantly trying to find it. She thinks it fell behind, she's playing with her hair, and then the, the one footage I got, I put the little subtitle on the bottom that she just says, well, I guess we should have done a rehearsal. So take a look. Brian Carey's team doing major damage control tonight following a show-stopping, jaw-dropping New Year's Eve debacle, which unfolded on live television. The pop legend had been brought into headline ABC's New Year's Rockin' Eve and finished the year on a high note. But instead, she sang very few notes at all. Now, the latest version of what went wrong. That skin-tight outfit, the big hair, all on point. But it's what the pop diva didn't sing that's grabbing all the headlines this new year. Put these monitors on, please. For nearly six whole minutes, an eternity on live TV, a sparkling Mariah Carey stumbled through a three-song set, including some of her most famous multi-octave songs. Mariah said she couldn't hear her tracks because of a faulty earpiece. You can see them hanging Her there, and you can see them on the front as well. Roger Love, vocal coach to stars like Selena Gomez and John Mayer, says that when performing live, noise from big audiences often overpower the music. It is completely common for artists to have backing tracks. They have these things called in-ear monitors, which are like mini headsets. 
So she not only could not hear herself, she couldn't hear the music. He points to the songstress repeatedly trying to communicate with her engineers. She already is bringing her hand to her ear, signaling that she is having some issue. They would have done a rehearsal. Uh, the audio engineer I know says would have, we would have solved it right away. Um, didn't, couldn't, get, couldn't get access. So what do we do, right? And, and I, I watch these, and I watch the Academy Awards, and I remember watching my Facebook feed and all of my friends that, you know, like people like you, most of my friends are now in the industry. But I remember people just like, what BS, this is horrible, this is, and I'm sitting there heartbroken. I'm like, oh, this is so, like this is the worst situation for somebody that's up calling that show and directing. I don't know why they didn't just go to commercial or cut to one of the millions of MCs that they have at that event and just got it fixed. So they played three more songs, let her try to do the whole thing. But so we're all, our job is moving things from A to B to C. This is basic project management, right? Gantt project management, trying to move things along a linear line, right? Because we were working in a real timeline of people sitting in an audience or viewing remotely and events started at a time and end at a time. So really trying to make sure that if something can't go wrong, do we have the backup? And I would love for every event planner, every, every team that I work with on the other side of that table to, to have those uncomfortable conversations and say, what if, right? What if the uh, airplane doesn't come in and our CEO can't take the stage? What if the power goes out? Right? You know how we have those emergency management plans for when we have a flood? Right? I've been at the town and country and it used to flood that, the old ballroom downstairs. Um, or a fire or uh, an active shooter drill. Right? All of these things, we have those conversations. So have the uncomfortable conversation with your team. When we were doing the pandemic events, we always had a slide that said, technical difficulties, we will be back as soon as we can. Please check your email for updates, because sometimes we had to resend a new Vimeo stream or whatever, however we were streaming it. So having those uncomfortable conversations is very, very important, because you'll get back on track. So let's take one more example from our, our friends at, at, um, at Mission Control. This is the same shuttle launch that we saw earlier. I think it's 30 seconds earlier, 30 minutes earlier. Oh, sorry, this is the quick little go or no go, and then we'll look at that. You're gonna hear one issue when it's like, stand by this, stand by that. Everybody's go, 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 except for one. Ecom, they have a problem. Go for launch. GC, go. Guidance, go. Fido, go. Prop, go. GNC, go. Max, go. Eagle, go. Ecom, go. Pending yep. final steps to cabin leak check. Go, um, I live in Seattle. I'm, I'm lucky that I fly here one week a month to, to manage our our marketing and, and sales teams and really try to make this an experiential um, production company that's all about experiences. And um, I fly Alaska. <laughs> Did everybody hear about the, the door plug that blew out? I was supposed to be on not that flight, but the flight next to it that next morning. And I'm like, it was another Max 9. I'm like, oh, oh man. Um, but when she says, oh yeah, we're, we're go, except we have a leak in the cabin, is what she says. I'm like, I'm sorry, but even just flying from here to Seattle, I don't need no leaks, let alone going into outer space. So what was Ecom's issue? So we're gonna look, right? So everybody understands, shuttle's gotta take off at a certain window, right? They have this um, certain amount of time, they could have to wait days or even weeks in order for them to get and, uh, and intercept the space station. So they have a certain amount of window, certain window they have to take off in or they'll never catch up to the space shuttle or the space station. So that window closes is in 34 minutes after that last video I played. With experience when selecting a different screen, uh, they're not confident in the system at this time and race is no go. Okay, what's your estimated time to repair? Uh, we do not know right now. Uh, they're having an anomaly discussion, but right now um, we only have a couple of minutes uh, to be able to give you um, our poll, and I, we're thinking at this time we're not going to be able to support the 2-0. Okay, keep us informed. I will. 
of flight. Density launch director. Go ahead, sir. Okay, guys, let's calm down. They're working a little issue over there. All right. We'll give them a few minutes if to work it. They pick up they the camel we'll in good shape. We need to be and, prepared, and prepared for that. that just got by on. Super calm, right? We're talking millions of dollars, millions of your dollars, if they got a scrub and launch a couple days later, right? Our dollars. So, um, even, and even if you know the, the Tom Hanks movie, Apollo 13, where they had that fail, they actually recorded the behind the scenes of that launch as well. And you can see one of the things that their launch director says is people started guessing. And this is what I'm trying to share, is that when we're up on that thing and something goes wrong, okay, a video's not playing, I will have a camera operator or an audio engineer that'll be like, did you try turning it off and turning it back on again? On comm, right? Or did you try this? I know we had this thing, updates were happening yesterday. Did the up It's like, okay, everybody stop talking. This is a conversation between me and that playback person. I make sure they're okay. Do we need to put somebody in your seat in order to get you working on the problem? How much is this gonna delay my show flow? What do we have ready to move into that position? I don't need people guessing. And that Apollo 13 one, you actually say, okay, every, you hear the flight director say to all these brilliant engineers in the room and say, okay, we don't need people guessing. We have the brain power, we're working the problem. Everybody keep working your system, right? We all wanna jump in and help. We all wanna quickly get to the, solving the problem, but doing it in the right way is so critical. So. You heard all the problems she was saying on there. It's like, we can't support. There's no way we're gonna be able to pull this off in 30 minutes. We're gonna have to, we're just gonna have to abandon. And they just reply with, we trust you. We know what you're doing. Please just keep working the problem. 33 and a half minutes later. Hello, I need to put this, uh, your whole switch to proceed position. 40 seconds remaining in our launch window. Range is go. Nobody's sitting, right? <laughs> We're very the, uh, tense. Been Negative, sir. Solo NTD. NTD. NT, I can remove the hold here. I can buy that. Zero, one, two, one, two. So need you to put your hold switch in proceed position. Hold by on proceed. They see GLS and you verify. GLS verify. 15 okay. seconds remaining in our hold. Copy. Your inspection on the net will pick up momentarily. CGLS, pick up the clock on your mark. GLS, copy. Three, two, one. Mark, T-minus five minutes. T-minus five minutes and counting. Whew, right? Like, holy crap. And I've been the show caller, the stage manager, and even the client, where it's been down to the wire, where it's like, at this point, we don't know how to fix the problem. And I've, for whatever, in my upbringing, whether it was my father as an engineer or my mom as a psych nurse that gave me the nice balanced brain, I can take the moment and be like, it's good, you guys. This is who's gonna keep working the problem. We'll pull in these other people if we need to, but it's all about just keeping it calm, keeping things moving forward, finding a solution. Having hot backups, having projectors that are lined up with the other projector, so if one projector bulb dies, nobody notices, right? We blend these projectors so it looks exactly the same. That's a hot backup, that's something that we'd use. Less important now that we're using more and more laser projectors. So lasers are um, the, the driver for a laser versus the driver for a light bulb lasts a lot longer. Um, but what can you do? Bring an MC up on stage, right? What did we do for that CEO that was 15 minutes late every day and probably still is to this day? Um, we, put, we put some trivia slides up, right? We had that uncomfortable conversation. You can make a voiceover announcement, have somebody just share and say, you know what, we're experiencing technical difficulties, we're gonna start a little bit late, or we're gonna break early and we'll have that keynote come back after the, the coffee break or whatever that needs to be. Having a backup performer, cut to commercial, video slides, right? Whatever you can do, in person and virtual, relying on your cue sheet, really knowing how to go and jump ahead and then get back to what you were doing. And then the last piece of this, which of uh, the communication and timing section, is really something that, uh, please, please do this moving forward. A lot of the times I'll get a slide, I'll get a thumb drive that looks like this. And they're like, oh yeah. It's got the music on there, it's got the PowerPoint, it's got a bunch of images we need to put in, we're gonna play those slides, it's gonna rotate, and I'm like, this tells me nothing, <laughs> right? So I've gotta open each one up, figure out what it is. I can see that it's a QuickTime movie or an image or, or a sound file. So ideally, naming all of these things, so this is just from this slide deck, this is what it looks like, right? All the different, so if I had a video that couldn't play, I could go quickly find it on my desktop and play it or reload it. Even better, I would love to see this is one uh, version I did where it's A, that's audio, V is video, and then the order that it needs to come in, 
PowerPoints right there. If it's a backup, it's a backup. It's labeled that way. But fitting all of that into the pieces that we need to do so that the audience can follow along, right? Keeping things um, on track and, and moving forward. So I'm going to play uh, an example of me calling a show from the Lush Cosmetics event, where, again, we're going to watch like the first minute uh, as an audience member, and then we're going to mute the stage, and you're going to hear me calling the show. So similar to the, the launch at the beginning. So same two minutes in time, but here's what it looks like on stage. All right, just incredible stuff we're seeing over here. Just incredible. Mm -hmm. So Park, our next guest that we're going to bring into the show, I think is going to help clarify why we're not wearing any clothes. Hopefully. Um, you all may recognize her from her thriving acting career, Undercover Boss, Window Warriors, the list just goes on and on and on. Actually, doesn't it kind of ends there? Oh, okay. Um, okay, so when she's not acting, um, she is managing to be our director at Brand Comps. Can everybody welcome Brandy Hall to the stage? <laughs> Hello everyone, thank you for that uh, kind introduction um, and a big thanks to Parik and Holly, or Polly as I've been saying in my rehearsals, uh, for bravely and boldly kicking off the meeting um, by getting naked for all of us. So yeah, um, so I'm here today to chat with you guys, um, sorry I'm jumping ahead already. Uh, well for those of you guys who don't know me, I'm Brandy. Uh, so you can see in that situation, she even had a moment where she jumped ahead, but we didn't advance. We knew. We knew she would just automatically started hitting the button. Um, but you're going to hear now what I said during that, and you're going to just hear me as we're talking about getting her on stage, and then getting the others off stage, playing the music, bring the lights up, all of that. So here we go. Stage wash up. Camera one, hold that shot and stay on you until Brandy comes out. Center graphics, stand by with Brandy's title slide. In the gate. Yeah, I, that looks, that looks nice with the Lush logo above their heads. That's a good shot. I've only been doing this for two weeks. <laughs> Focus, Johnny. Stand by Brandy. She'll be entering stage right. I see her and can confirm. Does she have her mic? Yeah, is she on handheld? Yes, handheld three. Okay, yeah, she's got it. Uh, do you hear it? I do now. Okay, so stand by, stand by, walk on music, and let's go off that cue. Go, walk on music, and push up right. Let's go ahead and put her logo to send your screen. Hello, everyone. Thank you for that uh, kind introduction. Um, and a big thanks yeah, to I'm gonna push Holly back in. and Holly or Paul. I like it. That looks great, Johnny. My rehearsals. Uh, for bravely and boldly kicking off the meeting. Um, How's it sound on the chords? So, yeah. Um, Looks like she's so advancing her slides, but she's early. Just wait. Um, Hold sorry, off. Jumping ahead already. Okay, yeah, uh, she's well, for she's correct. For those of you guys who don't know me, I'm Brandy, uh, director of Brand Communication. Right? Audience had no idea, right? She said it. She didn't have to. She knew we had her covered. But really, just always being ready, anticipating all those things, standing by what's next, communicating, communicating, communicating. Because what happens when these things happen, right? The video doesn't play, speaker's late, shark dances out of sync. Everybody remember that Super Bowl? I worked that Super Bowl, Phoenix, Arizona. Mariah Carey's microphone fails, power outage. They announced the wrong best picture winner. Heartbreaking. <coughs> and again, remember, using the assets that you have, if you're a show caller, ask for a multi-view, right? If they're gonna have it backstage, it's usually just the rental of an extra monitor so that you can see all the things they can see. I even, just as a, an event planner, would love to sit back there and just watch. It was fascinating to see all the things they could do. Um, so here's another one. This is a little different because it's not technology, anything else, it's, it's a soft problem, right? It's somebody handed them the wrong um, envelope. But you're gonna see the stage manager, or probably the assistant stage manager at the direction of the stage manager, getting on stage and grabbing that envelope from Warren Beatty, or I think one of the award recipients, looking and realizing it's for best actress and not for best picture, right? So whoever was backstage grabbed the wrong envelope or handed, was handed the wrong envelope and read the wrong award winner. You'll hear Warren Beatty even say, I don't think it's the right one. It says Emma Stone. Shouldn't say the actress's name or actor's name if it's for best picture, should the directors and producers. So here we go, and again, so many tweets were coming in. I was getting Facebook messages and I was, I was so heartbroken. I was so heartbroken and I was on my Facebook like, you stop talking like that. I've worked with you on so many events. You remember when that, that was like, have some compassion people. So here we go. 
the Academy Award. For best picture. You're awesome. <laughs> Come on. La La Land. Yeah! La La Land has 14 Oscar nominations this year and is tied for the most nominated movie in Oscar history, winning seven Oscars. Production design, cinematography, original score, song, directing, actress, and best picture. Uh, here's to the fools who made me dream, my uncle Gary Platt, my mentor Sam Cohn, my parents, my children, my wife Julie on whose shoulders I've stood for 40 years because she insisted I reach for the stars, and to the Hollywood community that I'm so proud to be a part of, and to the Hollywood and the hearts and minds of people everywhere. Repression is the enemy There's of our civilization. ASM. So keep dreaming because the... Literally having an oh fuck moment. <laughs> Excuse me, right? But that's what's happening right there. So, that was a recent Academy Awards, but I'm gonna use my, this is the last video we're gonna play and wrap things up. But this is from the 1996 Academy Awards, um, where Cuba Gooding Jr. wins for Jerry Maguire, and it goes on a little too long, they usually just play the music and get off stage, right? Let's take a look, and then we're gonna watch those same couple minutes from the production trailer with uh, Louis Horowitz, who's the director of the Academy Awards. And the Oscar goes to Cuba Gooding Jr. and Jerry Maguire. So I'm gonna rush and say everybody and you cut away. I won't be mad at you Tom said don't forget to thank your wife I will never forget to thank my high school sweetheart and the mother of my children Spencer and Mason I love you Sarah and my my parents who are here Shirley and Cuba's Cuba the first and uh, I, you know, and God I love you Hallelujah. Thank you father God for putting me through what you put me through but I'm here and I'm happy <laughs> Um, I just want to, uh, here we go, okay, uh, the studio, I love you, and Cameron Crowe, and uh, Tom Cruise, I love you, brother, I love you, man, Derek Crowe, Sean Settles, uh, Keith Butler, all my behind-the-scenes crew, Regina King, I love you, you did a great job when we made the movie, everybody involved with the movie, I love you, oh my goodness, here we are, I love you, I'm going to keep going, Harley Jr., Agency, everybody. Now, television, you're watching this because people have paid for commercial slots, right? They've got to stop. They have to go to commercial because that's who's paying for this event. So if they can't get to commercial, then it goes on and it drags on and goes on longer. So how do you make that decision? And again, I am just shocked that they happen to be filming a documentary about how to do this show during this one. So we're going to see Louis Horovitz. Um, as he directs what just happened. In this kind of a genre, you listen to the speeches. When I go up there and I win, in all probability, I'm gonna thank, if we know the history of these shows, my mother, my father, my agent, the producer. But you know, there's one man that's been very influential in my life and put me here today, if it wasn't because of him. Now, I've got six guys out there. I'm going, who's he talking about? Who's he talking about? That's me in the booth going, who's he talking about? Who could it be? Read his bio, read his bio. Well, he was influenced by Sir Lawrence Olivia. Is Lawrence Olivia? Yes, he's in the back. Go get Lawrence Olivia. And about the time he says, and that man is Lawrence Olivia, bam, I cut it in, there's Lawrence Olivia. And I go, yes! One minute to air, everybody. Oh, uh, thank you. Got to get one of the sauce, Dad? Now, 
45 seconds to air, ladies and gentlemen, 45. In 10, 9, 8, Ready, A. 7, 6, in 5, 4, 3, 2, rolling. Oh, from Los Angeles, California. Okay, stand by. And tens on, light them up, ready three, and three, and two are ready boxes. And the last one goes to boxes. Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, you got it. Long. Incredible. He's back and stay with us. Ready 12. 12. Ready back to 11. 11. Ready 15. Stay with the previous size. Get the other nominee. I won't be mad at you. Tom said, don't forget to thank your wife. Ready 11. 11. Thank my high school sweetheart. And the 33. Of my 3. Who's got her? Who's got her? 9. Ready, ready 9. Ready 11. 11. Sarah. And my, my parents who are here, Shirley and Cuba, Cuba the first. 33. And, uh, 15 has the exit. The 60. Uh, and, and, and God, I love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for putting me to what you put me to, but I'm here and I'm... Go run. Go, go. Music, music. I just want to... That's only the first 10 minutes of a three hour program, right? <laughs> like, and as much as I talk about keeping your composure, I'm like, wow, like that is, you are just living the moment and you are creating such an amazing experience. Louis ended up um, getting nominated for calling those Academy Awards um, and won while he was directing the Grammys. Was it the, what's, what's, the, what's the television awards? Emmys. Emmys, thank you, he won an Emmy for um, while he was directing the Emmys, they had to put a camera in the truck and capture him accepting his award. Um, you can see that on, on YouTube. And if you want to see more like absolutely amazing um, show callers, watch, uh, you can find them on YouTube where the show callers have recorded themselves calling halftime shows at Super Bowl. Um, and that is another level. That's where they're counting out the beats. So they're literally saying, and stage two, three, four, five, six, dancers, seven, eight, nine, and it is a whole nother level, but um, pretty amazing. So again, the three things I wanted you to take away, there's really only three types of equipment. Everything does one of three things, source, processing, and output. Things come in, we figure out what to do with it, we send it somewhere else. Two best practices about working with your AV or your production partner, communication and timing, right? Version, oh, how much I love to see, oh, PowerPoint slide, final. Oh no, final, 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 version three, version four. Just start with version one on the first one, version two, and then when you get on show site, do you have version five, right? You know. Um, and then controlling that number one variable, have those uncomfortable conversations, make sure you have redundancies and backups in place to make sure your, your event comes together flawlessly. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much.